Hey guys, and thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, we'd really appreciate it if you would. Today we're going to take a look at this Western Digital MyCloud PR2100 Pro Series NAS. Now this one is diskless, it has no hard drives installed, but it is available up to 28 terabytes. There are multiple versions. This is the two drive, there's a four drive with an LCD, and a four drive expert version as well. This one has an Intel Pentium N3710 quad core 1.6 gigahertz processor with four gigs of DDR3L RAM. It has multiple RAID options, built-in video transcoding for HD streaming through Plex, password protection and AES 256-bit encryption. It has remote offsite backup to another MyCloud NAS as an option. It runs MyCloud OS 5 with the MyCloud mobile app support. There's a front USB 3.0 port with a copy button that will allow any XFAT compatible drive you plug in to automatically copy to the NAS. There are dual rear Ethernet ports for redundancy, another USB 3.0 port, and dual power ports for redundancy as well, but it only comes with one power supply out of the box. We'll look at installing drives in it and then the configuration through the web UI. Installing the drives in the NAS is really easy. You just want to open the doors up, take your drive. We're using eight terabyte red Western Digital NAS drives. We're just going to push them in and then let the door do the rest. Installing the second drive is the same way. And there's a little picture here to kind of show you how to align it with the printed circuit board on that left side. Now all you have to do is connect Ethernet, power, and then get in a web browser to do the configuration. Once you've got the NAS on your network, you're going to want to open a web browser and navigate to MyCloudPR2100 slash. That'll pull up the web UI and you do have to agree to terms and conditions. You could also pull it up by the direct IP address. I'm going to put in a password twice to confirm and hit next. I've already created a test user, so I've already done this step, but you'll want to put in your real first name, last name, and email address. I don't recommend the auto update firmware because a couple of users have had problems with that. You'd really rather upgrade the firmware, you know, on your time. And I never opt for product improvement studies with pretty much any product. That's pretty much it. So now we can hit finish and pull up the web UI. So to start, we're going to go to set up raid mode. There are four different modes they're all going to be a little bit different. JBOD uses each drive independently. So if you put data on one drive and that drive fails, you will lose that data. Spanning is going to use both drives, but it's going to fill up one before filling up the other. And if one drive fails, you'll only lose the data from that drive. RAID 0 is definitely going to be the fastest. It's going to stripe across both drives. But if you lose either drive, you're going to lose all of your data. RAID 1 is what I'm going to recommend to most people because it's going to be one drive with all your data and the other drive with a copy in case that first drive fails. If you replace the bad drive, it's going to rebuild and you can just keep going forward. It immediately kicked off a drive self-test and this is just to check the health of the drives and make sure that everything is working properly. The test is complete and both drives are good, so we can hit next. This allows you to specify the space. This would allow you to basically not use the whole volume if you wanted to, but I don't really see a point in that since I want the whole thing to be redundant. Auto rebuild is pretty cool. That allows it to automatically rebuild once a new disk is recognized, and I am going to turn that on. Lastly, this is going to be the encryption settings. I don't need to encrypt the drive, but if you're going to do any data on here that you, you know, really worry about security on, go ahead and enable encryption. You can see now we have one volume, it's a RAID 1. The format is EXT4, and it's the full space, 8 terabytes or close to it of the drive size, and then you see both drives are listed. Now it's creating the partitions, which will take a moment, and this is actually formatting the drives in order to hold data. You can see the RAID is healthy and all RAID volumes are active and auto rebuild is on. 
You can also see the total capacity of our RAID volume. Next I'm going to go to the home screen which is a dashboard that kind of shows you the overall setup of the NAS. Under users you could create additional users that would allow you to restrict access. I really don't recommend using the admin user unless this is on a home network. You really want to make separate users for employees if it's a business. You can also utilize groups to simplify permissions so you don't have to do it for each user. You can do it for groups of users instead. Shares is where you're going to create shares, but there are these three by default. Public, Smartware, and Time Machine Backup. Of course, that's going to be for Max. You can highlight a share and remove it if you want, and you can create new shares. I'm going to make a test share for demonstration purposes. You can put in a description, whether or not it's public, so this is how you'd restrict access, so I'm going to disable public. Whether it's going to use a recycling bin, so essentially if things can be recovered or if they're deleted instantly. And down here is where you'd set up user access. Right now, admin's the only user and it's set to deny. This would be read only or editing. Most users are going to need editing rights, so that's going to be the one that we're going to use on this test. To access the shares, we're going to go over to settings, and we're going to take note of the device name. You can, of course, change this device name. This is the default. We're going to open up a new file explorer, and we're going to put in that device name with the slash slash in front of it to path the device. You can see the public shares here, as well as the default other shares like Time Machine and Smartware. Our test share is restricted to the admin user, so if you go to open that, it's going to want to get credentials in order to access. Our username is admin, and the password we created earlier when we set it up. You do want to remember these credentials if you want it to be persistent. If you're only wanting to get to it from a device one time, you can skip remembering the credentials. Once you're in, you can see the full path. I like to test permissions by creating a document and deleting that document as well, just to verify that our permissions are working properly. Going back to the home screen, we're going to run this firmware update. It's going to reach out to Western Digital servers and get the newest version and go ahead and install. This can take some time, so you may want to be patient, and you don't want to do this whenever you're accessing data from your NAS, saving it, or writing to it. It will reboot once this is complete. The NAS is back up and running, and now it's asking to upgrade the OS as well. It won't affect files or folders but it does look like it requires reinstallation of apps so I'm glad I went ahead and did this before installing any apps. I'll put a link in the description to get one of these on Amazon and if you intend to purchase, if you could go ahead and use that link, it would help support our channel. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you have anything you want to add that I didn't include, please put that in the comments as well. I'm always glad to learn something new. Thanks!